We're good. Hello, my name is Nolan Miller. Today's date is November 30th, 2009, and I am interviewing Ralph Gregg at Ball State University about his experiences in the military during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. To start off with a little of your background, uh, where were you born and raised? Muncie, Indiana. I, was, well, I went to Longfellow School in Central. I went in the Army when I was 17. What year did you go into the Army? 1949. Oh, what was life like growing up in Muncie here? At that time? The Depression is kind of rough. What did your parents do? My dad was a carpenter. Uh, contractor, subcontractor, uh, roofing and siding on houses, and raised 15 kids. So you had 15? 15, 15, 14 brothers and sisters. What, did your mother do anything? Raised kids. <laughs> uh, so were you affected by the depression curriculum? Oh, not bad. We didn't know we was poor. We, we ate good. That was the main thing. Did you volunteer for service? Yes. For the Korean War? Well, I had to, sir. At the time I went in, there was no war. There was a. It was just before the Korean War. And what and made you want to join the army, as opposed to other branches? Of the <clears throat> I had a brother in the navy and. I don't know, it's just a patriotic thing to do. I want to go. What were you doing at the time you were enlisted? What really made you join? Well, I had no future and uh, I had quit school and I thought I'd better do something with my life. Did you have any, or you mentioned your brother was in uh, service. Did you have any other family members that were in service? Well, my brothers, approximately a hundred years of service between all our brothers. My oldest brother is in the Navy for six years. I have a, another brother retired from the Navy. And Golden, he's retired from the Army Navy. Another brother was in six years in the Navy. And I was in 20 years of the Army. Did uh, those family members in service influence you to join? No, I was a uh, second one. My older brother went in, then I went in. It's five years between each of the boys. Did you have any grandparents or uncles that served in maybe World War One? No. Uh, I had a great grandfather was in the Civil War. And I have a little bit of history, not much, on him. When you uh, joined the Army, did you have a plan for your future? Did you say you were going to join enlist this long? I had no intention of staying in. I got out for a year, and then I went back in. Did you have any plans of what you were going to do after that? I worked Ball State for 20 years, retired from Ball State. Describe the moment when you got your letter telling you where you were going. About 20 times. I was, uh, wasn't too happy when I had to leave my family, but uh, when I was single, I was happy to go. Of course, I didn't know what was going to happen when I went to Korea. But then I was married when I went to Vietnam. So when you went to Korea, where did you go in the first, when you first got there? Well, with Pusan Perimeter, we had second division. We relieved the 24th, and that was in 1950. And we went from Pusan Perimeter all the way to the Yellow River when the Chinese invaded, and I got a busted leg. 
and I went to Japan for 21 months. I was in the hospital for four months. So. Let's back up there. Where did you go to training? Fort Knox, Kentucky. And what was that like for you? Did you enjoy it, or was it? Well, I enjoyed it. I. Uh, As a young man, that's just like a Boy Scout to me. Did you gain any knowledge that you say was useful in life outside the military? Outside? Or basic skills or mindset? Well, I was a heavy equipment operator, crane operator, and I got my GED in the Army. What was daily life like during training? It was so hectic and fast, I really didn't have time to think about it. Do you have any specific memories from training that you can recall? 26 mile hike, full field pack. I always remember that. Did you make a lot of friends there? Yes, we've had friends. We've had friends from New York to visit us. And we still visit a few of friends that we're in the service with. So did you all go to Korea together? In oh, no, no, no. I, I, that was, I would, met people in Germany, Fort Belvoir, Fort so many places, a lot of them I forgot. Now from Fort Knox, you went to Korea then? No, I, I went to uh, Camp Stoneman, California, and then from there, I was there about a month, and they sent me to Fort Lewis, Washington with the 2nd Division. 2nd Infantry Division, I went, I was, home on leave when the Korean War broke out. I went back and they put me in the infantry. Got on a boat and went to Korea. That was in 1950. And from there I went to Japan. Stayed 21 months from Tokyo Ordnance Depot. Was in the post engineers. I was on the 81 mortar. And did you see combat often? Yes. Uh, we was uh, for about three months. Was it a regular occurrence or was it just sporadic incidents? Separate? Sporadic. Uh, Would you describe what combat was like? No, I, I, I didn't. It, how was your morale and the other uh, soldiers around you in Korea? We had good morale. We was all buddies, worked together, slept together, fought together. Did combat have any effect on your morale? No. So after you served in Korea, what made you want to continue your service in the Army? Or what did you do after that? Did you stay in the Army after? No, I got out a year in the, and uh, I wasn't too happy with my life and I just running around. So I decided to go back in and made a career of it. So how long did you serve in Korea? Were you with the Army the first time? Three and a half months. And was your, what made you leave service? Well, 20 years. Oh, you mean the first time? Korea.
I just decided to get out of there. There's no particular reason. So then when you went back into the Army, what did you do then? I went into... What year was that? That was in uh, uh, 1950. And then what did you do after that? Oh, this is going to get rough. This is a... I have so many places I went to. I went to uh, Fort Leonardwood. From Fort Leonardwood, after going back in, I went to uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia for about four years. And while I was there, I got married. And uh, I was married less than a month, and they sent me our whole engineer battalion to the Arctic up in Newfoundland, Baffin Islands. We was uh, working for the Air Force, getting paid getting paid by the Air Force, working for the Navy in the Army. <laughs> I don't get you what the, but the, the Navy was in charge of the, the due line of the radar equipment and we was delivering it in the Arctic. We was up there for three and a half months. Was that a big change for you being up there? Was well, it was pretty cold. They, uh, it was uh, one time they was, the ship was dragging anchor, anchor and uh, so they left four of us on the beach for for about five days because they had to go out to sea and get away from the weather. And it was a lot of work, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. We was living on the ship. And I was a dozer operator up there. From Fort Belvoir, I got signed to Germany. Calls through Germany, and uh, I stayed there. Uh, wasn't a very long time; it was about four months. And I got sick, and found out that I had TB. So they sent me back to. Uh, Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, Army Hospital. From uh, after a year in the hospital, they removed two thirds of my left lung, and then they I went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, to an ordnance outfit as a crane operator. And was there 30 days, and the whole outfit moved to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And while was it? Oh, I, I messed up. It wasn't Fort Campbell. It was a uh, Fort Fort Leonardwood. I'm getting the places mixed up. But uh, I was at Fort Leonardwood. I was there about two years as a crane operator and an uh, instruction supervisor. I taught the heavy equipment. And they had orders to go back to Germany. And I took my wife and family with me to Germany, and that was a real good tour. We uh, uh, was in Germany about 28 days. My wife and family was there, two girls, and they sent my platoon to Spain. 
east of Madrid, but there's an Air Force base where it had to do some construction work. We was there about eight months. My wife left her in Germany. This is the Army for you. <laughs> but uh, they enjoyed it. They was uh, kids. Got a good education, and they were, well, we've seen a lot of things. Went to Austria, Switzerland, Sweden, Salzburg, Austria, places like that. How did you feel about all this constant moving? Well, it was kind of discouraging at the time. I enjoyed it uh, as far as moving and seeing them when I, like when I went to Thailand, when I was stationed in Okinawa, the whole outfit moved to Thailand, build a road down there for building a super highway. The government paid for it naturally. Do you have any memorable moments from any of these bases that you were stationed at? Oh yeah, I have. We went uh, vacation in Germany, like we went to Salzburg, Austria, where they filmed The Sound of Music, and uh, Mozart's home, and the uh, prisoner of war camps in Germany. was just stationed and they uh, sent me and uh, my wife wrote to Pentagon and says I don't think he ought to go. He's had, had uh, two thirds of his left lung removed and they wrote a letter back stating oh if he don't get shot he'll be okay. That was it. <laughs> they sent me. of the war up until that point? What did you think about the war before you? Well, I am very discouraged with the United States of fighting wars not to win. I, I think we should have fought either stay out of them or go in them just like we did Germany, Japan, fight to win. That's, that's it. <laughs> I didn't even know Vietnam at the time. I didn't, didn't know where it was at, what it was. Of what year did you arrive in Vietnam? 65. Stayed a year. And where were you located? Cameron Bay. We built hangars, airfields, things like that, roads. Primarily in construction. Construction engineers, heavy equipment. Did you ever see combat in Vietnam? Not in Vietnam. Did you have to? Oh, sorry. Can you describe your first moment arriving in Vietnam? Like a desert. <laughs> it was a uh, Cameron Bay. Was all the uh, sand dunes. And a deep seaport. Excuse me, I gotta wipe my nose. So, on a daily basis, what did you do? Work, we worked for about 10, 12 hours a day, and uh, and they wanted to get a uh, carpenter, somebody had knowledge, carpenter work. So I built frames for 
for the uh, tents and we put up tent, uh, all the frames for all the tents and battalion and I supervised the building of those tents, the frames for them. Did you come in contact with soldiers that had faced combat? Yes. Well, uh, we had a few snipers in our in our company that uh, one of the had a steering wheel shot too on his uh, grader, but uh, we was a pretty place, a pretty safe place in Cameron Bay. Did you ever hear any stories from the front of what was happening? No, not here. Was it hard to focus on your job when so much was going on around you? No, you're so busy you didn't think about it. What was life like there compared to Korea? Well, Korea was, time when I left, it was very cold and Vietnam was very hot. So that was a great deal of difference. But, uh, We slept inside the tents in Vietnam and then Korea was out foxholes most of the time. Did you have any free time or leave time? Uh, Vietnam, I went to uh, Thailand on R&R. &R. And what did you do there? I went to uh, the, uh, in Bangkok, went to a lot of the, uh, I guess you'd call them churches here, there it was uh, monasteries and places like that. Did you stay in touch with your friends and family? While you were there? Mm -hmm. mm, no, not too much. I just, Busy. Did you get letters from home? Yeah, a few. Did you ever get the chance to talk on the phone with them? No, no. That wasn't, didn't do that then. Did you ever come in contact with the South Vietnamese Army? No. no. Oh, uh, not, no. run into any social problems in Vietnam? Or racism or No. How are you or how long were you in Vietnam to what year? Sixty five to sixty six. About twelve months. Soldiers around you have support for the war. How did they feel? We didn't talk about it like they do today. What, and what did you do after you left Vietnam? Or I mean, how? When did you come back from Vietnam? In '66. And I and I'm getting my When I come back from Vietnam, I went to uh, it was in uh, 
Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Taught train shovel school down there. Did you run into any conflicts with anti-war protesters? No. Drafted was common for men to run away to Canada. How did how did you feel about those men? Did you have any opinions? I better not say. So you left service in 1970. Yes. What were your reasons for leaving service? I had 20 years. I wanted to get out and be with my family. I didn't want to leave them anymore. And that my girls was getting in, one getting ready to high school. I was very lucky while I was in the service. As much as I moved, the girls was always either out of school or getting ready to change classes. And I was fortunate in that they. Both graduated with honors. Of course, in Japan, they, I mean, Germany, the education, no basketball, no football, no TV. They studied and they go to the library and carry books back. And when they got to Wapahani, when they come back from Germany, they was ahead about a year and a half. And they, one daughter, she works at Ball State now she had a store scholarship, my other one had a Klein scholarship. So the Army done good with the education as far as my daughters. I noticed you had uh, several Awards or it's, yes, it's well, it's a good conduct with four uh, accommodation ribbon I got when I was in Vietnam building those tents. UN, Korea, or Vietnam, Vietnam here, the UN here. And it's just a presidential citation. Here's the one that, uh, that means a lot. It's a CIB, Combat Infantryman Badge. Of course, it's 1950. <laughs> it's in the second division. Uh, those are not bronze stars as you're thinking of them. They're, they're uh, each different battle. Uh, the, uh, the first battle was a uh, Pusan perimeter. And then when we call, crossed the uh, 38th parallel into North Korea, that was another battle. That's, you get a star for each different battle you're in. And then when, you, and when the Chinese invasion was another one, so that was three bronze stars. Uh, a lot of times uh, people get some mixed up and they say, well, he's won five bronze stars, I think the five medals, well, it's different battles. How, after you exited the Army, how was adjusting back to normal life? I had no problem. What kind of reception did you receive from people that you met from all your service? I kept my distance from the Vietnam people. I would not associate with them. A little bit better against them. So I, as I said, uh, I think we should have went in there to win or stayed out. Over there, did you feel the war was with 
fighting, like at the time when the United States was involved? I was just done my duty. <laughs> I didn't uh, have, that wasn't for me to decide. What did you do after you exited service? Well, I worked for months paving for a little while and then I went to Ball State for 20 years. Worked at, in the post as an equipment op, a mechanic in the grounds department. Did your military experience help you? That was the reason why I got the job was uh, in the transportation section, a mechanic. And well, while I was here, I drove the bus and I took a uh, semi. I had a license. I took a semi and went up to uh, Pennsylvania, brought back four Jeeps for the post. It was donated to Ball State, I mean. And then I drove a semi, picked up a Emmons Auditorium, a uh, theater, and took them up to Michigan, unloaded the equipment, brought them back. But that was just some of the things I done with through the transportation department. Did you find your military experience helped you in life in general besides your career? Yeah, I think I, the year I was out, I was kind of reckless and went back in and settled down. Sometimes I think. All young men ought to spend a year in service. Did you learn any lessons from service that you want to talk about? Well, I had a, a lot of a experience of on heavy equipment that I would have never had. And to me, it's a lot of times it's just like a job. It's How did you feel about? events that were happening in the United States towards 68, like Martin Luther King assassination and Bobby Kennedy. Let's see, I was at uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey when Kennedy died. And uh, It was, we had a lockdown for a little while post, and uh, we was kind of worried we didn't know what it was going to be, and then they settled down, but uh, I didn't think too much about it because I was just a young person and I hate it. I just wonder why people are so cruel. And it's kind of a hard question to answer. It's. Seen any Vietnam War or Korean War movies? Oh yeah, I see them all. History Channel. Do you think any of those movies accurately portray what it was like? Not too much. Some of them, but most of them are glamorized. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about yourself in the military?
learn how to get along with the buddies depend on your your friends your comrades beside of you depend on them and make sure they can depend on you how did the service or your service during wartime change you I've talked about that, and uh, I feel a lot of times people who changed after wartime, they was changed before. And a lot of people who has problems after they got out, they dope, drinking. It's not always what they had in the service. So I don't think it changed me. Did you ever have any problems after you left the service? No. I thought about it, but I... One thing, I I go to Harris Chapel, Nazarene Church, and go there every three times a week. I believe in the church, believe in God. And I don't like people to make excuse for themselves. When it's a lot of other things they're just using it as a crutch. Were you religious before you entered the war? Not too much, some. Not. I'd say no. Was that something that you got out of the war? No. Did you ever think that? No, no, it wasn't. It was a few years after I was out. What would you say to someone who's in the military now? Study hard uh, all you can. Use, use the, let the government provide you with all the education. My grandson went in the Navy for six years. He got his diploma while he was in the Navy. He got out, went to University of Illinois and got his degree in engineering. I say that's most, take advantage of what the service has for you. Do you see any similarities between the current wars and Vietnam? Yeah. Too many political peoples involved in it. Is there anything you want me to know about your experiences that I haven't asked yet? Do you want to talk about any specific topics or events that happened? No, as just as I said, that uh, anybody going into service, they ought to take advantage of what the service has to offer them and stay off from the dope. That's. Well, then I'd like to thank you for your time helping us with our project and thank you for your service to our country. I thank you. It was one thing more when I retired from Ball State. I uh, went to uh, American Legion and they asked me to uh, be on the honor guard. And I was on the honor guard for 11 years. And we have done 170 in one year. 
So approximately 1,500 funerals that we've, I've been to, and uh, it's an honor, and yet it does get to, to you after a while, and I, uh, last week I gave it up, thought that that was enough, let some of the younger guys take it. I, uh, I enjoyed it, and I thought it was a great honor, but I got tired. Went to just about every uh, graveyard in Delaware County. I even went to Ohio, funeral in Ohio. about all I have to say about that. And something you want to ask about the honor guard? Or Is that very tolling on you mentally? I don't let things get to me. I try not to. It's... When the taps played, I always have a little feeling, but try to show appreciation for the people who's there. Another thing I forgot to mention, you know, you said earlier that your brother was in Vietnam at the same time you were? Yes. I didn't know it at the time. He was on a, uh, a ship. I believe it was a cruiser or destroyer, but he was in Cameron Bay. I think he was involved in storing of uh, Agent Orange, so it might have been where he got sick. Do you guys talk about your experiences in Vietnam afterwards? No. no. We uh, joke a lot, but there's Marines, Air Force, and Army, Navy, and we have our little thing going as far as a canoe club and things like that. We teach each other, but we have great respect for each other at the same time. <laughs>